When I was four years old, there was only ever one thing I wanted to be, a superstar. Why, you ask? Because all I would ever do, all I would ever watch was Hannah Montana. I wanted to literally be her. Blonde hair, blue eyes, funky clothes. My parents were totally supportive of this, of course, except for one slight inconvenience. I'm Asian. Now, one of the things I think I didn't understand as a child was that if I'm born Asian, believe it or not, for the rest of my life, I'll be waking up in the morning Asian. Yeah, I couldn't believe it either. But eventually, I learned to accept the truth that I will never be her, and I soon dropped that face. For the rest of my childhood, I always felt comfort when I saw an Asian character on screen, from Mulan to London Tipton from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. There was no better feeling than seeing somebody that looked like you on screen. However, I could never fully comprehend what it was I was truly seeing because there was never an accurate representation. The problem is, I know it's not just me, but all people of color. As I, of course, when I was young and still not exposed to media, I lived my life unbeknown to this burden I feel now, this burden that is my race. I remember one of the first times I truly felt out of place. One Halloween when I was five, I went to school dressed as Aurora. I was so excited about my costume, only to get told by one of my classmates at school that I couldn't be Aurora because I was Asian and I didn't look like her. I was crushed. That was one of the first experiences I had where a feeling of encumbrance dropped on my shoulders because of my race. Definitely not the last. As I grew older and more exposed to media, the burden of, of being Asian somehow grew heavier. I suddenly knew that I could only be pretty, not the prettiest. My features were unpleasing unless they were a trend, and the beauty standard globally was to have light skin. And then when it came to culture, I tried to grasp onto any bit of Western culture I could in hopes that it would give me the sense of belonging all my white friends had. Doing this was taxing stuff. I was playing my own character, hoping to fake it till I make it. But eventually I reached a point where I asked myself, why? Over the years, I realize nowadays we have phones, we have books, we have movies, we have TV. But if you never see somebody that looks like you on screen, you will subconsciously feel like you don't belong there. The lack of representation I had growing up led me to feeling alienated inside my own body. So then I wondered, what is causing the strain of growth and diversity in mainstream media? Now, one of the most important things people need to understand and to grasp this concept is what racial representation is and why it's crucial in the first place. Not until quite recently have I seen non-white characters portrayed in a non-stereotypical way. For example, this could be from including microaggressions in dialogue, over-exaggerating an accent, or over-exaggerating the features the minority is known to have. Not until quite recently have I seen roles almost accurate. When we see ourselves on screen, or on anything, even if it just comes down to race, it sends a subconscious message to your brain that you belong and that you are valid. What we see informs our perception of reality. We all deserve to believe that we can do and achieve whatever we desire, no matter our identity. Lack of representation shapes negative perceptions and stereotypes, which then drive discrimination. Research has shown that diverse representation can help close gender and race gaps in education and can create inclusive and productive work environments for all learners. It can also create an environment of solidarity where ideas are diverse, perspectives are varied, and everyone feels valued. We need new role models for generations to come. That's why I felt the need to come here and talk to you about this today. Growing up with almost no Asian representation in media, I can't help but wonder how much earlier I would have been able to stop thinking about my race as a burden or if it would have been a burden at all. For example, take Barack Obama. When Barack Obama became the 44th president of the United States, the possibilities for black communities suddenly opened up. He became a role model and a symbol of black excellence and led them to strive for their dreams. Now, imagine if we just had 30 more Barack Obamas from all different races, gender identities, and sexual orientations. The ability it would have and the impact it would have on our society and its ability to thrive. 
So, so I, I say, say it's time, time for change. change. Now, now to make, make change, change, it's not, not that hard. hard. Now, now with social, social media, media, the answer's right, right in our pockets. pockets. Nowadays, Nowadays, the media can be an instrument of change. Of change. Its power of communication, interpretation, and storytelling can reflect the views of society and how it's going to move forward. Not only this, but it has the power to awake people and change minds. We just have to let the right people take the wheel moving forward. Thank you.